Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math and Reading. In today's video, we will be reviewing for the 2022 Texas Star Math Test for fourth graders. Our concept is fractions review. This is part two. Remember fourth graders, if you are always trying to be normal, you will never know how amazing you can be. We have our fourth grade math and reading workbooks available for purchase in our store. They are in, the link is in our description box so that you can grab yours today. Do you need a math or reading tutor? We offer virtual one-on-one -on -one or group tutoring for second to eighth grade students. Parents, you can click the link in the description box so that you can sign up for a free 30 minute consultation. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and press the like button so that you will be alerted to new videos we upload, but also spread the word about hype, math, and reading. We greatly appreciate your support. So let's talk about fraction basics. Remember that whenever you have a fraction that the total parts must be divided evenly, and also look to see what you're trying to find the fraction of. Let's look at an example. For our top row, we have a pentagon and it is divided into five equal parts. Our total parts, which is our denominator is five. And we're gonna look at the number of shaded parts. There are two shaded parts, so our fraction is two fifths and it can be read as two fifths two out of five or two divided by five because our fraction bar is actually also a division sign as well let's look at the bottom we have nine circles with different shapes and objects inside of it so our denominator which is our total parts is nine and we're looking for the number of stars which is seven we have seven stars so our fraction is seven ninths and it can be read as seven ninths seven out of ten or seven divided by nine now, when we're looking for equivalent fractions, what we need to do is find a fraction that has a different numerator and denominator, but the equal, but equals the same amount. And that's what equivalent fractions are. Again, it has a different numerator and denominator, but equal the same amount. Let's look at our examples. We see we have one fourth which is equal to two eighths and also four over 16 or four sixteenths. So you may be asking yourself, well, Miss Jackson, how do we get two eighths? I'm glad you asked. In order to find an equivalent fraction of a fraction, what we need to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the same amount or we can divide the numerator and denominator with the same number. Let's look at our example. We have one fourth and we are multiplying the numerator and denominator by two. When we multiply our numerators going across, one times two is equal to two and four times two is equal to eight. And that is how we have two eights which we see by with our picture that it does equal the same amount as one fourth. Now, the same thing with um, four sixteenths, what we're gonna do is multiply our numerator and denominator one fourth by the same numerator and denominator, and that is four. When I multiply my numerators going across, one times four is equal to four and four times four is equal to 16. So my equivalent fraction for one fourth is also four over 16. And like we mentioned, like I mentioned, <laughs> we can also divide to find the equivalent fraction and we do the same thing. You're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the same number. So let's look at our top row. We have six over 24. And if we divide the numerator and denominator by six, 
dividing our numerator is going across. Six divided by six is equal to one. 24 divided by six is equal to fourth. So six over 24 is also an equivalent fraction of one fourth. Again, we have two eights. If we divide two eights by two over two, multiplying our, our numerators going across, two divided by two is equal to one, eight divided by two is equal to four. So that is how we can show that two eighths is also an equivalent fraction of one fourth. And lastly, we have four over 16 divided by four over four. And again, no matter what um, number you choose, as long as you multiply or divide by with the new number being the same in the numerator and denominator. So multiplying across four divided by four is equal to one. 16 divided by four is equal to four. On the bottom, all we did was show how we can multiply by a number with the same numerator and denominator and then divide it and it will equal the same amount. So one fifth the times three over three is equal to three over 15. In the same way, three over 15 divided by three over three is equal to one fifth. Next, one third times 10 over 10 is equal to 10 over 30. And 10 over 30 divided by 10 over 10 is equal to one third. Now let's talk about comparing and ordering fractions. The first thing we need to remember is that the alligator mouth always opens up to the largest number. Okay, so let's look at the two shapes on the left-hand side. We have one square with four equal parts. Four is our denominator. And there are three parts that are shaded. So three-fourths is my denominator. And on the right-hand side, we have a square that is divided into eight equal parts. Eight is our denominator. And the number of equal uh, shaded parts is six. So six eighths is our denom. I mean, our numerator. Six is our denominator. Now, looking at both shapes again, even though the numerator and denominator are the same, are different, we can see that the value is the same. Okay. Let me say it again because Miss Jackson might have confused you a little bit. In looking at both shapes, we see that even though the numerator and denominator are different, the shaded values are the same. So three fourths is equal to six eighths. Now let's look at our shapes on the right hand side. We have a rectangle. The top rectangle is divided into three equal parts of that two parts are shaded. So two thirds is my fraction. And for the rectangle on the bottom, it is divided into four equal parts and two of those parts are shaded. So two fourths is my fraction, okay? Now, since my denominators are different, what I need to do is find the least common denominator or least common multiple, and we can use it interchangeably, okay? So we have, what is the least common denominator of three and four is equal to 12 because in order for me to compare or order fractions i need to have my denominators the same okay we could not find what or compare our fractions two-thirds and two-fourths without having the same denominator so in order to get the same denominator what i need to do is find the least common denominator or you may hear least common multiple okay so finding the least common i'm sorry finding the equivalent fraction for two thirds with a denominator of 12, what I need to ask myself is, what number multiplied by three is equal to 12? And that is four. So I'm going to multiply my denominator and my numerator by four. Multiply my numerators going across, two times four is equal to eight, three times four is equal to four, 
three times four is equal to 12. So two thirds, my equivalent fraction with a denominator of 12 is eight twelfths, okay? Now I need to do the same thing with two fourths. We know our denominator is now 12. I need to ask myself, what number can I multiply by four in order to equal 12? And it is three. So I'm gonna multiply three by my numerator and denominator. Multiplying my numerators going across, two times three is equal to six, four times three is equal to 12. So now that my denominators are the same, all I need to do is focus on my numerators, eight and six. And we know that eight is greater than six. So my alligator mouth or my inequality sign is gonna open up to eight because eight twelfths is greater than six twelfths. Let's dive into our questions. And remember fourth graders, we have a fourth grade math review workbook that you can purchase the description. The link is in the description box. Number 19 says, Sergio completed two thirds of a project. Julius completed four ninths of an identical project. Each student shaded a model to represent the fraction of the project he completed. Which student completed more of his project? F, Sergio completed more because two thirds is greater than four ninths. G, Julius completed more because four ninths is greater than two thirds. And I'm saying two thirds because we're looking at the shaded areas, okay? H, Sergio completed more because one third is equal to four ninths. And J, Julius completed more because four ninths is greater than two thirds. So the first thing that I need to ask myself is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the student that completed more of his project. Now that we know what we're looking for, the next thing we need to discover is what information can help find the answer. All right, the information that can help find the answer is that Sergio completed two thirds of his project and Julius completed four ninths of his project. Now that we know that part, the next thing we need to ask ourselves is, how are we gonna solve this problem, okay? How are we gonna solve this problem? In order for us to solve this problem, we need to compare the fractions, okay? And we need to remember that the alligator mouth of the inequality sign always opens up to the largest number. Okay, and in comparing the fractions, remember Sergio has two thirds, completed two, two thirds of his project and Julius completed four ninths of his project. In comparing the fractions, we see that in the shaded areas that two thirds is greater than four ninths. So now that we know that part, we need to discover what our correct answer is. In order to do that, we're gonna look at our answer choices to see which one, which answer choice matches two thirds is greater than four ninths. Two thirds shaded is greater than four ninths. Do you see the answer? If you said F, you are absolutely correct. Two thirds is greater than four ninths. So Sergio completed more again because two thirds is greater than four ninths. Let's move to question number 20. Trevor jogged the following fractions of a mile last week. Which comparison of these fractions of a mile is true? So Monday, he jogged three-fourths of a mile, Tuesday, five-tenths of a mile, and Friday, four-fifths of a mile. And our answer choices are the following. A, four-fifths is later than, is great, I'm sorry. A, four-fifths is less than five-tenths. B, 
four fifths is less than three fourths, C, three fourths is less than five tenths, and D, three fourths is less than four fifths. And our most important question is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the comparison of the fractions that is true. So now that we know that, the next thing we need to ask is, what information can help find the answer? Well, the information that can help find the answer is number one, we need to find our least common denominator or our least common multiple. In order, in order to do that, we must look at all of the multiples of our denominators, which are four, 10, and five, and they're color coded so that you can follow along. So the multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24 and so on 10 it's 10 20 oh y'all see miss jackson put 34 that is not right it's 30 um 40 and so on and for 5 it is 5 10 15 20 25 and so on and in looking at all of the multiples of the denominators 4 10 and 5 we see that they all have 20 so 20 is going to be my least common denominator or lcd or lcm now that we know that we need to convert our fractions let's start with three fourths and again it's color coded fourth graders so that you can follow along to find the equivalent fraction with 20 as my denominator, I need to ask myself, what number times four is equal to 20? It is five. So I'm gonna multiply my numerator and denominator by five. Multiplying my numerators going across, three times five is equal to 15, four times five is equal to 20. Moving to five tenths, we need to find our equivalent fraction with 20 as the denominator. I need to ask myself, what number multiplied by uh, 10 is equal to 20? It is two. So I'm gonna multiply my numerator and denominator by two. 10 times two is equal to 20. Five times two is equal to 10. So now my equivalent fraction for 5 tenths is 10 over 20. Last, we need to find the equivalent fraction of 4 fifths with 20 as my new denominator. Again, asking myself what number multiplied by 5 is equal to 20 and it is 4. So I'm going to multiply my numerator and denominator by 4. Now, multiplying my numerators going across, four times four is equal to 16, five times four is equal to 20. So my new equivalent fraction for four fifths is 16 over 20. Woo, now that we've done that, how to how are we going to solve the problem well we need to compare our fractions so let's dive in and do that now we have the answer choices and at the bottom we have their equivalent fractions okay so now we see that four fifths is less than five tenths with our uh, fractions with the with 20 as the denominator, we have 16 over 20 is less than 10 over 20. For B, 4 fifths is less than 3 fourths is converted to 16 over 20 is less than 15 over 20. For C, we have 3 fourths is less than 5 tenths, so 15 over 20 is less than 10 over 20. And lastly, we have D. 3 fourths is less than 4 fifths, so 15 over 20 is less than 16 over 20. Now that we have that, what is the correct answer? In order for us to find the correct answers, what we need to do is look at all of our fractions, and we're talking about the ones where the denominators are the same. All we need to do is look at the numerators to see which answer is correct. So let's look, and I'm just gonna focus on the 
fractions where 20 is the denominator, okay? So for A, we need to ask ourselves, is 16 less than 10? For B, is 16 less than 15? For C, is 15 less than 10? And for D, is 15 less than 16? Out of all of those um, comparing fractions, which one is correct? And if you say D, you're absolutely correct. Three fourths is less than four fifths. And that is it, fourth graders. Remember, if you need a tutor, we have a link in the description box so parents can sign up for a free 30 minute consultation. And we have our fourth grade math and reading workbooks available for purchase in our store. That link is in the description box as well. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math and Reading. I will talk to you later.